All right, now on to my least favorite part, um, policies. Like I say, these are all here because I've had problems in the past. Uh, the first one that I engage with is plagiarism, and I just quote with a footnote to the, the, the policies and procedures uh, manual. This is the student handbook. You're responsible for this anyway. Um, given that this is a writing intensive course, and given that you're going to perhaps be frightened and um, it confused about this material, it's very tempting given, the, one, this is an online course, and two, given all of the junk on the internet, um, it, that you might be tempted. I understand that. Don't do it. Um, because it's, it's, it's theft. It's theft of others' intellectual property if you cut, paste, and present it as your own. Right? Don't do it. Sanctions can be severe. Plagiarizing the work of others. Plagiarism is using someone else's work or ideas without that giving that person credit. By doing this, a student is, in effect, claiming credit for someone else's thinking. Whether the student has read or heard the information used, the student must document the source of that information. When dealing with written sources, a clear distinction should be made between quotations, which produce uh, reproduce the information, uh, from the source, word for word, within quotation marks, and paraphrases, which digest the source um, of information and produce it in the student's own words. Both direct quotations and paraphrases must be documented. Even if a student rephrases, condenses, or selects from another person's work, the ideas are still the other person's, and failure to give credit constitutes misrepresentation of the student's actual work and plagiarism of another another's ideas. Buying a paper, using information from the web or internet uh, without attribution and handing it in as one's own work is plagiarism. Now Oakland University is very serious about their plagiarism policies. Um, the way my contract is laid out, I am considered to be an adequate judge of your understanding and facility with this material. That's how I'm able to grade your material. But in terms of authorship, they do not consider me the final arbitrator in terms of who authored the work. So my contract stipulates that if I suspect, if there's any reason to think that this work is not yours, I have to pass it on to the Dean of Students office or I'm fired and I need this job. I have twin girls who are three and I need to earn money. So that's just what my contract says, right? So if there's a case of plagiarism, this is just what happens, right? Um, to help you with your cost-benefit analysis, I've instituted a zero-tolerance policy on plagiarism in this course. Um, like I say, my contract says I just have to pass it on to the Dean of Students office for an academic review board. Expulsion from the university is possible is possible in this procedure. And um, my course policy is that if, if there is a case of plagiarism, you fail the course. You, you, you just, so, man, don't do it. Don't do it. It doesn't make any sense. You see, I need to see what you take of this material, right? What your understanding is, I need you to provide an analysis of it. And if you give me somebody else's work as your own, I don't know. I can't, I can't do my job. I can't assess what you've understood of this material, right? So I, and it's an ethics course, right? So this form of theft is a really big deal. This is, this is the cardinal academic sin. Right, so don't, don't, don't. So, it, a lot of you are probably nervous at this point, saying, oh, plagiarism, it's a new word. I don't even know what is plagiarism. What do I have to reference? What don't I have to reference? That sort of thing. 99% of the problems with plagiarism that I've experienced, there are many over the past many years of teaching, 90% of them could have been handled with a footnote, right? Oakland University has a big honking library. 
that's all reference material. Right? I make you buy a whole pile of books here. This is all reference material. Right? We're going to talk about this material which involves quoting it sometimes. Aristotle claims. Where does Aristotle claim that? It's in Aristotle. Here's where you find it. Right? It's also perfectly acceptable, though not within the bounds of the course, to go and read an analysis of this material somewhere else. Right? And comment on the fact that this is somebody else's analysis of the material. I wrote a dissertation. I had several thousand footnotes in the nearly 400 pages of my dissertation, several thousand of them, right, saying, this is somebody else's work, this is my commentary on it, you know, or this is my analysis, or this is my deployment, right, or I'm putting it together in an interesting way. I mean, this is, this is what academics do, right? It's just about being clear about what's yours and what's not yours somebody stole your car, you wouldn't be happy. Right? What's more important to an academic than their car is their ideas. This is how I compete in the marketplace. Somebody steals my ideas, they've stol stolen my means of earning a living. Right? So, I mean, this is, this is part of why it's important not to do this. So, if you're looking for guidance on how to avoid plagiarism and uh, where and when and how to properly cite your sources. I give you a link down at the bottom of page two um, to uh, the Cite Rate program through the Academic Writing Center. It's an online program, it's a tutorial. Um, there's a light one and a full on one. Um, the light one ought to be, and that's the link that I give you here, it's oakland.edu, O U W E slash site rate, that sort of thing. There's a link right on the syllabus. So um, go there if you're unsure, figure it out. It's on you. It's it just, just like it's on you not to steal my car, it's on you not to steal other people's work, right? And this, this is precisely the reason why I hate the policies section of my introduction lecture, right? Because like I say, you're probably very nice people and we won't have any problems. I would love it if we got through the entire semester and we had no issues of this sort. That would be awesome. That's my ideal, right? So, um, plagiarism, finger wag, finger wag, don't do it. You haven't, I know, you're probably nice people. It's here because I've taken 50 some odd cases through the Dean of Students office of my tenure at OU. It's something that comes up, right? So now I can point to a policy and point out that I said don't do it when y you did it, right? But don't do it, we won't have any problems, right? So that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I've just had problems in the past, that's all. Uh, missed assignment policy. That's here because I've had students come up to me in um, April and say, hey, I missed the first quiz. When can I retake that? But it was January, the first quiz. Right? So it, it messes with the workflow. It's not fair to other students. This course involves you engaging with material that unfolds in a way that I've given thought to with regard to how much time you need to digest it, right? So, missed assignments. I, I'm the first one to understand. Like I said, I've got twin girls right, who are in daycare and get sick and then get me sick and that sort of thing. I understand my car breaks down, my computer crashes, that sort of thing. I get it. Life happens. What I'm saying with this missed assignment policy is that you need to either tell me before the deadline or due date or within 12 hours you know, in order to get an extension. You'll find me very forthcoming with extensions, but an extension requires a conversation. There is a give and take. I'm going to work with you if you work with me. And I think that's pretty fair. Uh, um, assignment submission. You'll be submitting assignments to Moodle. A few things to keep in mind with that. When you submit an assignment to Moodle, make sure that your assignment has submitted to Moodle. Make sure. 
If you're not sure, email me this the assignment just to make sure. It's good to double check. Um, second thing with it, when you submit an assignment to Moodle, make sure it's the right assignment that you've submitted to Moodle because once it's submitted, that's what I've got in front of me. Right? I can only grade what I get. So um, make sure I get sure Socrates Aristotle assignment, not your analysis of William Wordsworth or something along those lines from your English class or your stats homework or your diary or something. Stranger things have happened. Right? Make sure I've got the right document. Make sure I've got the document. That's on you. On me is to grade it and give it a fair shake. Right? And I, I will do that. I'm duty bound to do that. Right? So um, it, preferably let me know before the deadline, oh, professor, it looks like I've had these issues and um, or I've been sick or something along those lines or my turtle died and that sort of thing. These these. Fine. I, I get it. Life, life happens. We're, we're people. <laughs> so I, I'm going to work with you. You just have to work with me. Right? We've got to have a dialogue about these sorts of things. Um, email. There are 105 of you. You all email me. I try to stay on top of it. I fail every semester. I get behind. I get way behind. There's only so much time I can spend online checking emails, responding to them. Um, frequently when I get a lot of emails, I get like 10 emails from students all asking me the same question. I send out a blanket email to everyone. Answers the question. If I get 10, I probably have 50 and that's half of you, right? So I, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just trying to be efficient, right? Um, sometimes I miss emails. Send me another if that happens and you'll get a, a sincere apology because I try to stay on top of these sorts of things. Um, and um, spam folders are a thing. So make sure I've got your Oakland University email. Make sure you're using that one. That's what I heavily prefer for a course. It's searchable so that if I'm looking for, oh, here's my assignment just to double check and I don't have it on Moodle and you're using some sort of Jenny1234 backslash backslash whatever at Hotmail, if anyone uses Hotmail anymore. Um, I can't find that in my folder, right? Whereas if it's Joe Smith at oakland.edu that shows up in your searchable and I have a record of my students in your email addresses. So use the OU email address. Um, and uh, boo, 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 boo. Um, so use that address and um, really the best way to ask me questions is in office hours right? I have them come by and see me I never meet my online students right? this will it'll be nice it'll make me feel like I'm actually interacting with humans so um, and for the most part I'm sitting in my office doing this right? so um, come interrupt me. Right? I'll twiddle my thumbs on my own time. At my office hours are drop in and it's your time. So um, that's, that's, that's email. Um, discussion uh, forum content policy. Here's the thing about the discussion forums. Um, all of this material should come with a trigger warning. I mean, it, all of it should. Right. The entire course should come with a trigger warning. Philosophers are bad at this. We talk about all of the things you're not supposed to talk about in plot, polite conversation. We talk about religion. We talk about morality. We talk about sexuality. We talk about money. We talk about value. We talk about politics. We talk about it all. You are likely to get triggered by some of this material. And what I'm asking you to do in the forums is to engage with one another, to offer critiques of each other's positions, to go on a back and forth, that sort of thing, right? The point is, two things with the, uh, the, the discussion forum. Keep it classy and keep it topical. There are two ways people are going to screw up if they're going to screw up the forums. Well, three, really not doing them is the third way. but. Nonetheless, right, uh, there's an easy way to handle that. I give you a zero and we both move on with our lives. But, right, the other two ways which are if you're engaging earnestly in the forums and you get into a heated debate with somebody, 
do not attack that person. If I see anything like a personal attack or a slur or a derogatory remark, I remove the post and issue some sort of penalty. Right? That's the way it goes. Right? We have to keep it classy. Right? This is an academic resource. And keep in mind that the person you're debating, you're debating about the material and keep it about the material, not about the person you're debating. No ad hominem attacks. That's a fancy term for a kind of argumentative um, fallacy kind of thing, right? I don't like you, so your argument is invalid. Well, no, that's not the way. It's, it's, it's read the argument like the argument and analyze the argument, critique the argument, right? Don't attack the person. That's... That's key. And, um, hey, when are we getting our grades back? That's not the right place for it, these forums. Hey, what's everybody up to this weekend? Is anybody studying? No, that's not what these forums are for. The Socrates forum is for talking about Socrates. The Aristotle forum, these are educational resources and should be treated that way. So um, I, I mentioned that because I moderate. I read every bloody post you make, which makes my work week very, very, very long and interesting. Very interesting. But nonetheless, um, I keep a good eye on this. And if there are problems, I'll address those problems. I have a policy just to let you know what's expected of you in this scenario, right? It's an educational resource. Don't attack each other and use the educational resource for educational purposes. No. I think I've got reference to a blog in here. Anybody blog? Really? Anyhow, um, then finally, um, extra credit? No. It, there's not time and it doesn't help the people that need the help. Right? It helps the people that don't need the help. Right? Most of the people that engage with expert credit assignments are the people that already have A's, so they just they, they get better A's. But, you know, the, 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 there's a ceiling, right? Um, it, there are plenty of grades here, and I'm loosey-goosey enough with the, 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 the assignment deadlines. I, I give you the questions for the exam nine days before the exam is due, so you've got your notes, you've got your questions, you've got the web, you've got each other, you've got me. You've got every resource to succeed. Right? Mobilize those resources that are in front of you. Extra credit. I... I, I, I just don't have the time in my work week to manage extra credit. So, um, it, 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 there will be no extra credit assignments in this course. <coughs> and finally, on the very last page of this syllabus, this is something you are not used to. When I submit, I submit now letter grades. I used to have to convert to four-point grades, but now it's letter grades um, to the Office of the Registrar. This is my percentage point to letter grade conversion. I'll pause, let that sink in a little bit. The A range goes from 80 all the way up to 100. If you're in the 70 range, you've got some sort of B. If you're in the 60s range, you've got some sort of C. If you're in the 50s, you've got a D, and anything less than 50 is no credit. So um, that's the way it comes out. That's just so you don't freak out. You'll see numbers coming at you in this course. Keep that in mind, and just don't freak out, right? So if you've got like a 60 some odd, why am I failing? You're not failing. You've got a C something, right? That sort of thing. And all the Office of the Registrar ever sees from me is the letter grade. So if you've got an A, you've got an A. Even though it's an 80%, that's not a B, that's an A. And so that's where we're going there. Now, that might give you the impression that I'm an easy professor. It's, it's accordingly harder to get into the 80% range. Um, this, is, this is just what I grew up with. Um, all of my undergraduate and graduate degrees come from Canadian universities, and this is the scale that they work on. 
sort of arbitrary to assign letters to numbers and that sort of thing. Uh, but with regard to the, 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 the percentage point to letter grade conversion, I get to set it myself here at OU, right? That's what it is. That's what it is, right? You still get a letter grade at the end of the thing, and that letter grade reflects the work that you've put into the course. So, um, that's all I got on this welcome video. Uh, in addition to this, I will be posting a general introduction to philosophy and pre-Socratics. That's what will keep you busy um, for the preamble section of the course. Um, I've also uh, posted a very short video um, called What's Philosophy For? Um, it, which is sort of interesting and fun. Um, so, uh, given that this is most people's first philosophy class, that's what we're doing. So today is the third. This week and next, um, you should screen those videos, right? Maybe start some of your reading, get your books, um, read over the syllabus, email me with any sorts of questions that you might have, um, that sort of thing, and we will start the content of the course. Um, it will pop up for your uh, viewing pleasure on the 13th. Um, so between the 13th and the 25th, uh, you will be prepping for the first quiz, which is on the 25th of January. Um, so I know that's sort of a slow start to the class. Um, I'm trying to lay this class out so that it um, occurs at the same rate as my on-campus class, and I don't see them until Wednesday. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, please email me or feel free to stop by uh, my office hours um, every Wednesday, but Wednesday the 9th uh, from 5.15 till 6. I teach right after. I'm typically there early, so um, stop by. Come say hi. Uh, I look forward to having interesting discussions with you this semester, and uh, have good days, one for each of you.